Hi, I'm MJ Hikats here at Leopold's Cafe, where we like to pair our bottles with books. So for this month's tasting with the Cap Times, we've selected this wine from California. It's a Chardonnay. California is known for its high quality Chardonnays, but we're particularly excited about this bottle because it comes from the good folks at Brown Estate, who were the first black-owned estate winery in Napa Valley. We specifically went with a Chardonnay because the production techniques in Chardonnay uh, render a fuller body, fuller flavored style of white wine. So you may notice nuttiness in this wine, which should pair very well with the pumpernickel in the dish. Also, the buttery notes will complement the cabbage quite well. This wine finishes in a bit of acidity, which should refresh your palate and leave you ready for your next bite of this delicious dish. If you're interested in trying more Chardonnays from around the world, or if you just want to learn more about Chardonnay because you love it, please join us on Monday evening, September 19th, here at Leopold's Cafe. We'll be pouring international Chardonnays. We hope to see you there. Cheers. Was that yours? Uh, so. Was it you? Yeah. Hey, welcome to Cooking with the Cap Times on this cozy, dreary Monday evening. I am Chelsea Decane Jarabic, and I am going to pass it off to our food editor, Lindsay Christians, and Harvey House chef Joe Papich in just a second. Um, I want to welcome everybody. This is a very unique Cooking with the Cap Times. This event is part of this year's Cap Times Idea Fest. It started today. Yahoo, you guys! This is the sixth annual Cap Times Idea Fest. It is the largest event that we do throughout the year. It's the biggest way that Madison and our readers can support the Cap Times. You can go to captimesideafest.com to see the full schedule and register for free virtual sessions just like this one. We also have some in-person sessions that you can buy tickets for. Um, most notably, it would be Friday and Saturday. We're having some fantastic in-person sessions on UW-Madison's campus. So go get your tickets before they sell out. Um, and I want to uh, give a plug to our beer that's in my hand right now. I don't usually chug beers during this event. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what she says. <laughs> <laughs> this is our collab be beer that we teamed up with Young Blood Beer Company on. It is uh, Thought Bubbles, named by the one and only Lindsay Christian. <laughs> I'm so proud of that. <laughs> you should be. It's a great name, right? <laughs> this beer um, is unique because it was brewed with Wisconsin-grown copper hops, giving it a uh, tasting note of maraschino cherries. So we love that. Shout out to Youngblood. And I want to quickly thank our sponsors for helping make Cooking with the Cap Times possible. We have our official kitchen sponsor, where we are tonight. Kessenix is open to the public. You can come here and shop like a chef. Visit their website. I will post that in the chat to learn more about them and see their business hours. And I also want to thank Leopold's Books Bar Cafe. You saw a message from them at the top of the video. The wine um, they chose tonight is paired to go with uh, Chef Joe's dish. And you can stop by Leopold's Books Bar Cafe on Regent Street to get some coffee, get some wine. You can purchase the wine that we're featuring tonight. And we're going to give away a bottle of wine to uh, a lucky at-home viewer. So throughout tonight's event, comment in the chat a request here from the team, your best cooking pun, and we will pick one winner <laughs> at the end of the event. <laughs> I'm also going to give away a four-pack of the Cap Times Idea Fest beer, so we'll give away one lucky winner. Um, again, a follow-up, I guess two of the best puns for the night. Um, and a shout-out to Hinkley Productions, they're our video uh, film partner for this series. And uh, one final plug for um, all of our in-person audience here. They're all Cap Times members. We love them so much. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, they uh, became Cap Times members by giving any amount to support our newsroom um, and support local journalism. So go to membership.captimes.com and become a member if you haven't yet. And that is how you'll get the exclusive in-person access to join us at a future cooking event. 
Now I have talked enough. It is time to pass it off to Lindsay <laughs> and Chef Joe. Take it away. Thank you so much, <laughs> Chelsea. Thank you, Joe, for being here. Of course. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would like to say that already, this is my most well-attended Cab Times Idea Fest event that I have ever done in Yay! six years. <laughs> um, <laughs> so thank you very much. I, I feel like always the, the food things are like, co-programmed with like Carl Bernstein or some like <laughs> some really high profile person and I'm like cool like I this is really amazing but there are three people here so it is amazing that you all are all here thank you thank you thank you I already yeah. feel amazing and great so this is like a win right from the start all right good, good, good. so first of all I was hoping you could tell folks a little bit about who you are sure. and yeah. how you landed in Madison uh, well, I'm Joe Papich. Um, I grew up actually in Whiting, Indiana, which is basically right outside of Chicago. Got it, okay. And uh, went to culinary school at Johnson Wales in Rhode Island, Providence. So after I was done with high school, left Indiana, went to the East Coast, mm -hmm. and then uh, finished culinary school, then worked in Boston, worked in New York City at Gramercy Tavern for a long time. Uh, left New York, I did a small stint in uh, Richmond, Virginia mm. for a couple years and then after that I had, had o headed over to California. I worked for Mike Tusk at Quince and Catonia in San Francisco and then ultimately leading me to the French Laundry for six years working for Thomas Keller and uh, you know gained a ton of experience all throughout that way and um, and then I uh, met my wife Shana Robbins and we got married and she is a, a lifelong Madison born and raised, left, came back, of course, and then we opened up the Harvey House. Nice. And the Harvey House opened about a year-ish ago? A little over a year ago. Yeah. yeah. July 20th, 2021. Yeah. So right? You were 21? Working. We're in 22 now? Yeah. We're in 22 now. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah. Was, that was one that I, I think people were really excited about it opening. The renovation was was really Intense. amazing. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, lo I mean, the train station building, we're really lucky to have all that character. 1903 building, it was the baggage handlers building, a part of that train station. Um, There's really nothing in it. It went through uh, in a very intense remodel and, you know, and changing something that had just like a brick shell and yeah. nothing to cook in and yeah. like <laughs> no kitchen and to add all that. It took a long time and, but we did it and we've been open for a little over a year now and seems like people like it and right. you know <laughs> co go to work every day we love it good team it's great yeah i did a tour of that space in 2017 um, okay because i was writing a, a profile of gil elchel who's going to be on the program whatever this is this he's going to be part of this next next month um and we were touring that building and it was like offices upstairs with those like, like gross carpet. Oh, it was kind of falling apart. Yeah, yeah, it was wild. And I was just sort of like, I, I cannot, it, it's so hard for me to imagine how the Harvey House exists in this, in what I remember. Right. Because it was, there was nothing there remotely like what's there now. Yeah, and then we took away even more. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then um, we excavated 2,000 square feet underneath it oh to make God. prep room, you know, like all the room to do all the infrastructure work for the restaurant. Um, and then we, yeah, still reused a lot of the old beams that were in there. All the brick got redone. And then also added all of our nice finishes that we yeah. did. Yeah. The original art, I love. I love the low vintage touches and everything. Oh yeah, they got Harvey, who is Shana's uh, paternal grandfather, up nice. on the wall in his like World War II uniform. Yeah. Um, there's a picture of Shana's mom up there. You know, it's family place, so nice. it's a good, it's a good little homage with good artwork and good little pictures of family. Yeah. So when you were putting together the menu for Harvey House, sure. which I'm sure you were thinking about for a very long time, you had all that pand pandemic time. We had some time on our hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's some, you know, tr I, I never really, I was never really into Wisconsin, and I was like, well, I need to drink some old fashions. I need to <laughs> sit in my kitchen all night long, and I need to dream about recipes that are related to like maybe what we're gonna do here. And yeah. Yeah, just like you know, research stuff about supper clubs, research stuff about you know being in the Great Lakes region. And um, just getting excited about that and led to, you know, yeah. coming up with the menu. 
So I, I love dishes like the one that you're going to be making for us tonight because some of these things, you know, I have my Slovak heritage and then the cabbage, you know, the anything with pumpernickel and rye, like, yeah, you know, totally. there's a lot of these these sort of flavors and ingredients that are very familiar to yeah, Eastern European. Totally, Eastern European. Yeah. I mean, I'm a product of like, you know, Chicagoland area. I'm half yeah. Mexican and half Croatian. So <laughs> having <laughs> cabbage right. and rye and all that kind of stuff is good. But then reading up about Wisconsin and like early, early settlers and stuff like that, the Germans, you know, the Scandinavians, you know, there's a lot of cabbage, a lot of rye, a lot, a lot of, of cabbage, all that. Yeah. <laughs> and then we live right next to Lake Michigan and Lake Superior. So what, what else to eat but then some walleye. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how this recipe comes together. So this recipe comes together. Um, you get really good, good walleye. Um, we get Madison uh, sourdough from the east side. We get them to make uh, their uh, rye bread with the caraway flaked into it. We have just regular green cabbage. We use savoy too. Um, and then we added uh, a horseradish element to it and we were thinking about the sauce for the dish. Yeah. So we wanted to add good spicy fresh horseradish, fresh grated, and then we also wanted to add some preserve too, just to give it that good zing. Um, yeah. Uh, and then sauteed and then we add spetzel, which is very German too. And, and then European, just a little yeah. and Eastern European. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. We um, just accentuate it with more caraway too. Nice. All right. Well, where, where do you want to start? So let's glue some fish together to the Yay. bread. We got let's these glue. three beautiful <laughs> um, pieces of walleye right here. I have this slurry, uh, this little concoction right here. It's, we call it egg white cornstarch. Um, we take this, we blend the cornstarch. It kind of wants to separate. You got to like kind of bring it back together. Just like a good dip. And then we just brush the fish with that. Do you use a whisk? Like, how do you? Yeah, okay. whisk it together. You're gonna, it's, you're gonna be like, this is not happening, <laughs> or something is like not right. This is not but going. then it eventually it'll all okay. come, to, it'll all come together. So you just give this a good coat. And I think the trick about this is to have your fish already ready to go dry in the refrigerator. Maybe you, you did it earlier in the morning. You know, before it's deboned. It's, it's like deboned. It's, you know, walleye can be tricky with bones. There's like the belly end that gets trimmed away. There's like these bones that run pretty far down. We got those sliced out of it really well. And then, um, and then very, dr and then dried because, you know, came out of the water. And then it doesn't help stick too. So get a good coating of this egg white cornstarch on there. Do you, when you're, when you're trimming off the edges of the, of the fish, are you using them for something like stock? Well, that's funny you ask okay. because at the at because <laughs> at the Harvey House we make a, a mousse out of it. Oh right, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that so was this is part of the this recipe is originally like, part of the recipe, and I was like, <laughs> I don't know if I want you guys slaving over that for like <laughs> you know. It, it looked delicious, but I was day. like. Some but of yeah. the ingredients. Yeah, Shayna knew right away. She was like, I don't know if the, I was like, no, it's too much. <laughs> yeah. So obviously these slices of bread were done on a machine slicer at the restaurant. Um, feel free to just go ahead and get your, your bread knife and slice the loaf of bread down, glue it straight to there. And I think the next step that's kind of crucial to this is just to stick it back into the fridge. Oh, okay. And then let it set because then the cold will help the glue, the egg, and the cornstarch and all that to like adhere to it. Two questions. How thin is this right here? It's very, very, very thin, right? Uh, it's like an eighth of an inch. Like an or eighth of an inch. quarter of an inch, maybe. Yeah. This bread. Yeah. And. But if you made it thicker, you would just have an awesomer piece of toast on top of it. <laughs> okay. Bread, so it really <laughs> okay. And if you're, if you're slicing this and say that you're not as good with a bread knife as the slicer is at the restaurant and you end up with multiple pieces of bread. Oh. How nope. big of a deal? Okay. Not a big deal. Cool. Not a big deal. Awesome. Hopefully, you know, you got all the technique in the world and you're going to nail it and you, <laughs> get, you can just get it all glued onto there and just put it all together and maybe it'll look like, you know, some triangles or whatever. Maybe, maybe some cool shapes. So we'll stick this in the fridge. There were a lot of little things in this recipe that were like, and, and you want to, I think in a lot of recipes where like you want to give it a little bit of time, like you want to be able to have like, for it to chill back down or to stay yeah. cold, you know, things like so that. So this one's already done. This one actually has the mousse Magic. already put on it. You know, did that early this morning, like at 5.45 when I first woke up <laughs> for this. Get ready for this. I'm just joking. <laughs> Please, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's ready to go. We'll bring it out to temper while we do the rest. So we're not cooking the fish straight from cold, but we got other things. So I have, um, let's see, what could we go into next? Oh, the spetzel. I think that's a good uh, next step. So. You know, Spetzel, Eastern European. Mm -hmm. 
good good dumpling type. I have seen so many like sort of varying techniques with this, so I'm I'm really interested to see how you're going to do this because. Okay. It's like fam my, in my family we do halushki and we use two spoons. Oh yeah. Right? Oh, I mean, there's like really strict German ways where they only use like a flat spatula on a board and they work the spatzel dough and they push individual noodles into the boiling water. Oh my goodness. Um, and they're long and they're really like chunky and good. Um, but this we're gonna do it a little bit quicker. Actually there's like firmer pieces that you put into a grater and you can grate it into the yes, boiling water. Yeah. And then there's a firmer dough that's kind of like more like pasta dough that you can press in a special press. Yes, yeah. I've had a cylinder and it's like like a ricer, like a potato ricer, like that kind of contraption, but it's specifically made for special. Yeah, I've I had seen it for also like I this kind of thing where you're going back and forth. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the grater, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one, this just because, cool. you know, we work in restaurants, so we gotta move fast. Um, so that's milk? So that's milk, yep, that was 250 grams of milk to 375 grams of flour. There's uh, 175 grams of eggs, which is about three and a half eggs. It's all also in volume. <laughs> in your Cups. recipe. Cups. <laughs> yes. I, I use a scale at home, and, I, and every time I talk about it, my mother is like, oh, no. So. <laughs> like when you weigh out, like in I grams? I love weighing things. In and my mother ounces. won't do it. She, like, won't do it. She still grabs fistfuls of things. She, I don't know. She just cups of things. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, it's imprecise. So you always want to go wet into dry, right? You never want to go oh, yeah. wet bowl with all your dry on top because it'll just puff and you'll never get it all the clumps out, really. So this is like grabbing the flour. So there's no salt in this yet. Well, uh, there is salt. I put Ooh. it into the eggs. Okay. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. And then when you heat up the water, I have it covered over there simmering. Um, that too is seasoned as well. Yes. Yeah, with salt. I think that uh, one thing that I've noticed between like most home cooks and most people who work professionally in kitchens, uh, we don't salt as much. At home? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. We <laughs> salt, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we salt, we salt way more than at the restaurant. <laughs> like you want it to be like seasoned. Yeah. Yeah. Not too much. Not less. Not like where people are asking. But it's for as salt. you go along. Oh, as you too. go along for yeah. sure too. It's like the layering of seasoning and salt to season as you go because you yeah. have to season everything individually in the beginning. Pulls out water. Pulls out like all the flavor of the vegetable or the meat or whatever it is as you go along. It's becoming like a like a thick batter. So yeah, it's come into this thick batter, and you get it all in there keep moving it around and then it's not too lumpy but the one thing is is this is kind of like it's kind of like a pasta it's a dumpling and it needs to rest or it won't like fall out of the the holes uh. the right way so this always lets sit you can let it sit out on your counter for half hour something like that this is the thing yeah 20 minutes let's sit, yeah and then you can go into that but you got other stuff to do too. I do. Like while you're letting it sit. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah, there's. You could just let it. This isn't the last thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I already made some. Some's already made. I have spatzel batter already done that's already been rested. Okay. And then I have this bigger pot, which I shouldn't have done because the stove is like super slow and low. But um, you want it to be boiling, moving along, seasoned with salt. And then I just have it covered to keep it boiling. And then I grab this perforated hotel pan. This is a kitchen thing, like restaurant thing. It is a restaurant thing, yes. And Let's uh, show folks over here what, a, what this just looks like. It has all the holes. It's yeah, like yeah. you can put it in to steam, or if you had wanted to steam something. Um, yeah, strain things out. Like if you're going to pour things out. Got it, yeah. Good idea. So this is, this is boiling here. I have my skimmer here. So I'm just going to put this over the top. Show them the skimmer so they can see kind of what you're skimming with. I was trying to describe it. This is like a, like a spider. Yeah, or a spider. A spatula with a handle. There's some round ones too that are like have the brass top on it that scoop stuff out of boiling water. Does this it get, works. if you leave it in the water like this, does this get hot as well? Mm, a yeah, little bit. A little bit. Kind of. Um, this I carry around everywhere I go. Um, this is uh, it's like a bench scraper. So like if you're working on a countertop or you're pulling dough or you need to scrape stuff out of a bowl, this is what 
you use, you always wash it every time. You don't have to carry it in your pocket, I guess. <laughs> um, it's maybe my favorite kitchen tool, like one of my favorite. I have like four of them. Yeah, they're pretty good. I have a backup too in case like somebody <laughs> else needs one too. Do you have one on I you? Do not have okay, <laughs> you can hang on, you can hang on to that one too. So you just want to take like a small portion of the dough, make sure or of the batter, and put it right over the top of the holes. It works with like a colander too. Yeah, like work, yeah, a colander, colander is yeah. a good one too. Yep. So the the batter just went directly onto it. I don't so know. So it went directly onto it. I'm going to put this guy in here. You're definitely going to need like a towel for your hand. Um, and then you're going to push the dough, the batter, through the holes, scraping down. And it's going to fall into the water. Just like we were saying with the other methods, you know. The water is boiling. Is the water salted? The water is salted, yeah. Salted water. And then I scraped the bottom so I don't make a giant mess transferring this around onto my other tray. I'll put that in there too. I'll give it a swirl around. And then little give squiggles. it little squiggles, little, squiggle little, noodles, little, yeah. little squiggle noodles, little like tiny little dumplings. Um, and then uh, I'll let those just sit in that simmering water for a little bit. They're steaming away. And once they're all pretty much, they're all starting to float to the top, they're cooking a little bit more. And then um, I'll pull them out. I have a little bit of uh, just like nonstick spray on a piece of parchment paper, just so that they don't clump all up together while they're still hot and cooking. And, uh, and then I'll just let them sit for a little while. And then we'll go into uh, cooking some cabbage. Is there a too long that you could wrap? So oh make yeah, they'll start to dissolve. <laughs> you, like walk away and go do something else and they're simmering away in the pot. It'll start, you'll see nothing after a while. <laughs> yeah. uh, is there too long for the batter to rest? Oh no, you, you can do it the day before if you want. Sweet. Yeah. I love day before stuff. Day before stuff is yes, pretty good too. The best yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, like yeah sim boil. simmering's good. If it's rolling boil, you might be hard to like catch them all out of the water, but Simmering's good. And then once, yeah, they're all starting to float, we're going to start extracting them out. Nice. And then they turn into these like little beads. And that's I don't know what the difference is between a noodle and a dumpling, I've realized. A noodle and a dumpling. Literally, like this could be a no this looks like noodles, but it's also really, like it's dumplings though, right? Yeah. What is, existentially, what? <laughs> yeah, are we? <laughs> <laughs> what is the difference? <laughs> Are we going to Google it? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to look it up. Well, I mean. Because are these. I think noodle, noodle is like more, more a shape. Maybe that's an egg explainer. Yeah, noodles versus dumplings. An explainer. Ooh, egg or baking powder. This is what we want. All right, well, these have egg in it. But you yeah. can make pasta with eggs, too. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we can just. Mozzarella yeah. sticks. Yeah. Cheese curds versus mozzarella like small, sticks. Small, small mozzarella the, sticks. The next existential. <laughs> it's a size <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's a shape thing. We think it's maybe a shape thing. Uh, when we make uh, halushki in my family, there's always a lot of butter involved. Oh yeah, there will yes. be butter involved in this too, yes. right? <laughs> I mean, we can't go without it. Right? I love it. All right, yes. cool. Um, now I'm going to chop up some cabbage. I love that you're doing this with green cabbage. This is, I get a ton of green cabbage from my CSA. Oh, and really? Like Wisconsin farms, they love the green cabbage. I mean. And, and they come and they're like. Huge. The size of your life. Yeah, like, totally. <laughs> just. And I like cabbage a lot of ways, but more ways. More ways, yeah. <laughs> Would be good, yeah. Cause so <laughs> we're going to just, yeah. I mean, you don't have to get like super exact with this because we're going to cook it really well. Um, I took a little bit of that base core out already and I made it like so that it would lay flat and go from the top like this. It's just to julienne it a little bit. Tell me about your knife. It's thinner than some that I've seen. Um, like in terms it's of... A, oh, like the length width, and yeah, thin? Yeah. It's a slicer, I guess. It's a slicer. Yeah, right. it's like a slicer knife. I think it's from Japan or something like that. It sh I sharpened it the other day. It works. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like engraved with your initials. No, it's a tool. If it breaks, I'll throw it away and get another one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more precious about my knives than you are. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. I, I beat through knives. Uh, I name them. Oh, yeah? 
<laughs> so who's, who's your favorite? My current favorite is Hercules. Hercules? <laughs> <laughs> Powers through. Yeah. There you go. He's a great knife. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I've had this one for a little while. Actually, I think I stole it from Shayna. I was like, you're not using that. I'll use that. <laughs> All right, so cabbage. Julie on the cabbage. All cut up, ready to go. Um, we'll get this pan. It's been simmering for a little while. We'll add some uh, just neutral canola oil to it or mm -hmm. grapeseed oil. Good amount of it right here on the bottom of the pan. The pan is already hot? pan's already hot. Got it. This isn't too hot. I'll bring it over here and just pop it right in. So that's cooking. You're safe. Cool. <laughs> Move that around. Chef hands. Trusty salt. I don't think I've ever used one of these before. How do you do that? Just pop it off. <laughs> Grind it down. Give it a good layer. Cabbage likes salt. It does. Yeah. Because it tastes like not a lot. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot going no, on. No, it doesn't have a lot going on. Whoa. Put your cap back on your salt. <laughs> <laughs> and then just let this cook down. And then it'll get nice and uh, caramelized. So it takes a little bit. You've used savoy cabbage with this. You've used I use savoy, green, we cabbage. Used green cabbage. We never did purple cabbage. There were some early thoughts about purple cabbage, but we changed our minds. It does turn color, like it does have a lot of color. It does have a ton of color. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it would bleed in like other yes. colors, and then the spatula might not look so good. Um, I feel things like, like that. When you were doing this special before, were you doing it with spinach in it at one point? That's at the restaurant we do okay. it with spinach. So we make the spatzel the same exact way, okay. but then we take a proportion of the milk and we also blanch spinach till it's like perfectly tender and you can like like tear it and it's super soft. Wring out all the water, put it in a Vita prep, which is a big blender okay. thing, and uh, turn it into a puree. And then we add that to the batter. Mm. Mix that in with some herbs, like parsley, a little tarragon, some chive, and then add that to the batter and then it turns it green. And then it also gives it a very like herbaceous flavor too. So That sounds great. And yeah. a fun way to like zhuzh up your spetzel. And also to like add some color to the plate, add just another flavor without doing like too anything too different, you know? So this is cooking down. Obviously, we have some already ready to go, so we don't have to stand here all day. You know. <laughs> we get it this hot, too. Um, and then we'll get a pot, because next we're going to go into making our sabayon. This design is so much better than what was here before. It was like random sinks. Random sinks? Yeah, just random sinks. And now it's this lovely prep space. Yeah, it's good. Someone yeah. named Lauren did a really good job with this. I like it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say someone named Lindsay. Did no, it's not me. It was definitely Lauren. She so um, I'm going to let this pan get super hot. This pan's getting pretty hot, too. Maybe we'll cook the fish over here. Nice. All right. Um, and then we'll cook the spatzel, because there's one last step to cooking the spatzel. The spatzel needs to be toasted in oil, finished with butter, gets a good color on it, and then it also gets combined with the cooked cabbage as well. So you're, OK. So you're, st you're doing it with oil and then also butter. Yeah, so you get the yes, cooking and. you get the cooking going. Yes. Just a little thin layer of oil and then um, and then butter. Nice. So that's how you get that. So I'm melting down the clarified butter cuz then we're going to make the sauce. Yes. So, the so for clarified butter, um, a couple notes, you can get it, you can buy it. You can buy it at the store. Yeah. Ghee. Ghee. Yeah, it's just it's called on ghee. the shelf. And then also or clarified butter. There's ways to do it. I learned in the microwave. Okay. Yep. There's ways to do it in the microwave. Uh, I don't. I have not tried this, but like apparently the size of your vessel is very important if you clarify butter in your microwave. Volume. Got to be bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because it'll. Yeah. Explode everywhere. Yeah. Right. I it can see that happening. Hundred percent explode. Um, but at at the restaurant, do you clarify it like in large quantities? Like how do you? So we were cl we were buying two cases of butter like every couple of days to clarify, and we were like. <laughs> We're in the great state of Wisconsin. <laughs> there has Someone to be must do somebody this. does this already, right? Yeah. So we get clarified butter already done. I think it's like um, because it, you know the gold package of butter, double A wool, wool. What is it? It's not carry gold. Is not it? carry gold. Yeah. It's a different. Begins with a W. It has a gold packet. It's, I think it's eighty-three percent butter, double nice. A Wisconsin. 
but they have clarified butter, and we go through a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. Whoops. All right, so that's, so that's melting. So while this pan is getting hot to cook that, I'm going to get started on the, um, on the uh, Savion. Ooh, okay, yes, this is our, this is our methodology. This is our, uh, yeah. So I, I feel like there's a, there are a lot of techniques that you are using at Harvey House, and I, I would say that many of them are kind of invisible. Like, they're giving things incredible flavor, but you're not, like... Uh, like you're not thinking? You're like not thinking about it. You're not thinking about, like, the demi that went into... You know what I mean? There's, there's background work. On the front end. Yeah, like the prep-wise and, like, yeah. all that. Like, you think it's just, like, a simple kind of sauce. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's a little effort that goes There's into all it. this other stuff. So I'm wondering, in terms of the, like some of those things that, that you can do to like really amp up the flavor, mm -hmm. is there one that you think, like if you're going to invest time in one thing to really give something flavor, yeah. this is what's really worth it for you, home cook, to do yeah. this? Yeah, uh, the sauce, for sure. The sauce, yeah, okay. The sauce. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, this sauce is, uh, I mean, it's an egg yolky emulsified butter sauce with horseradish in it. Like this, this is, is gonna this is gonna take it all together. I mean, also like you know, cooking your spatzel and your cabbage and butter is also gonna help. <laughs> um, but just to bring the like whole dish together, the sauce, and it's like, you know, it's something that you can learn to do. You know, it's a technique. You can then you can transfer it and make hollandaise or make a different sauce too. You know, for eggs Benedict, it's kind of the same the same concept. I am gonna ask you how to fix it if it breaks. I don't know. Let's see if it breaks. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> So you get your yolks in your water in a pot that's pretty warm already. You get all those yolks in there. And I think the trick really to make sure that this, um, well, doesn't break or is. Going to show them real quick? Yeah. So this is the water. The salt's in there too. The yolks are in there. And I'm just going to put this on a pot on here. And then um, you break up all these yolks. So now your goal right here is to warm these egg yolks while whisking and turning them super, super frothy and making them warm. And then they'll become hot to the touch without turning them into scrambled eggs. So the water, the salt, and the yolks, like you thin out the yolks, will start doing that. So I'm going to take it back over here and is just start. Is this a specific kind of pot? So this pot is a good pot for this right now. But there's a pot <laughs> that is to make to make yeah, yeah, savion. Yeah, that's my question. Yes. Yeah, it's like sloped edges, so you don't have any corners, and you can get all of your. But even yeah. at even after even at the restaurant, I couldn't get one. I tried to order one from All Clad, like yeah, yeah, yeah. four restaurants from All Clad, and they stopped making them. What's that? What you're doing? Similar yeah. Similar to Hollandaise. Yeah. Similar to Hollandaise. Yep. And then really quick, did, uh, Doris is asking, did you just say that they should not use red cabbage in the recipe? They can. They can. Yeah. They will, it, it was, could bleed. It'll, it'll, it'll bleed into yeah. the other things. Okay. It might not look as attractive because once it goes from like purple cabbage to cooked purple cabbage, the color, the color starts to change a little bit. Okay. Not saying it wouldn't be good. It, yeah. But so we're warming and we're constantly whisking these egg yolks. And then like in Hollandaise, there's usually like a white wine reduction or you can add vinegar to it or Bernays also is another derivative of an egg sauce that has tarragon added to it with vinegar. Does Savion usually have wine in it? Uh, usually, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we're going to add lemon juice to finish. Okay. And we're also going to add preserved horseradish too. And then you get a workout at the same time. Your, your right arm, or whatever, your dominant arm. It yeah, whatever your fun. dominant arm is, you're going to start going. So you kind of want to also move, you're just like gently heating the yolks. You're not going to just like forget about them on the fire the whole time. You gotta, yeah, okay. It's kind of like a an easing into it while whisking and moving them all at the same time. So, And then it'll come to a, the ribbon stage, which we say. The ribbon stage. And then it gets like super thick. Okay. It looks kind of like anglaise or like ice cream base, oh, okay. a little bit yellower than that. So I think in the recipe I indicated a double boiler for this. Oh yeah, you can totally do that. So if you had this pot, fill it with this much water, put a bowl on top, you could put the yolks and the water and the salt yeah. and everything on there, 
and then start whipping them. That's how I melt chocolate as well. Uh, yeah, so you don't burn I it. Just, I put a bowl on top of, I mean, I don't have a double boiler, but I put a bowl on a, a pot and it sort of works. Uh, both, texture and color. So you'll look for these yolks to just start cooking and they'll get lighter and yellow. So lighter yellow yeah. in color. And then also the texture, you'll see it. It'll stop moving and it'll get thick like hollandaise. And then that's when we'll start going into our our next steps. Egg proteins are magic. I e believe this. Eggs? Egg proteins are magic. Egg yeah. proteins are magic. Eggs yeah. are great. Eggs are like They're amazing. Eggs are amazing. <laughs> I eat eggs every day. I love eggs in pretty much all forms except for the hundred year, the century egg. Won't do that one. Chicken eggs though. It's fun. <laughs> it is looking very light, it's lighter in color. I notice you're moving it off the heat. Yeah, moving it off the heat because you don't want to turn into scrambled eggs. You still want to like progressively get it hot and like yeah. hot to the touch without turning it to straight boiling and curdling the eggs. And then also adding all this air into it with your whip and getting into the corners and make sure there's no scrambled eggs hiding in the corners or any egg yolk that doesn't get whipped into the middle. You want to keep doing that too. Got it, okay. Is this something that you have to do when you're like a young cook coming up that make you do this kind of whisking a lot? Um, really? Like, like you're not allowed to like graduate to the right. new, new thing unless you, <laughs> totally unless you know how it. to whip really well. Yeah. Is it a skill? Sure, skill? sure. <laughs> so. so see how that's kind of changed? It's getting lighter and thicker like that. It's not like just the watery yolks anymore. It is getting, you can physically see it getting thicker. It's visibly getting thicker. And then also is it getting, yeah, it's getting a little hot. Keep whipping, keep whipping, keep whipping. And then I melted the clarified butter first because you need to stream it in slowly, but you have to also remember to not make the clarified butter too hot because once you start whipping that into that, it can start frying your base. It will fry. It'll start frying it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have, do you have temperatures, like temperature indicators or no? Um, like if we want to see what the temperature of the fryer is or something like that. Like see what the temperature of the butter is when you're putting oh. it in there, yeah. I mean, you can. I've never done it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you use an immersion blender? For the final move, for the final emulsion, uh, emulsifying of the clarified. But for this part? This part you have to do this. I don't know, maybe, I'll, <laughs> I'll, maybe next time I'll try it. <laughs> I love how you think. I'm like, I'm always like, can I shortcut this? Can I do this faster? Is there a machine? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm immediately like, can I put my KitchenAid mixer over the, like, and just go. No. What's that? Can I? Everybody wants okay. to know how you can cheat. How can you cheat? There's no cheating. <laughs> Get There's out of no here, you cheater. Yeah. No. But, no. but your friends will love you, though. True. Think how much they will love you. Yeah. But, but you've been doing this for like seven minutes. Seven minutes? Really? That's like cardio. It is like cardio. I think I got a little sweat dripping down my hand. But cooking is cardio. That's cooking true. is cardio. I mean, yeah. I run up and New down the stairs idea. all day. Everybody <laughs> here wants to know how we can cheat. And there's just not. There's no cheating. There's shameful. No cheating. We have a shameful audience. All right. It's OK. <laughs> It's all right. Come on. So, so it's thick. It's thick. It's ribbony. It's Let's, good. So show us what the ribbon stage looks like. Here. So see how it moves, and you can see it move in the yolks. It's like fluffy and light, and you can. Yeah, sure. Yeah. See how it's fluffy. It looks like hollandaise already. This is no a good machine. time. Just <laughs> whisk. No machine. No machine. It's a good time to remind people at home. Oh yeah. Oops. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's a good time to remind people at home as well to ask your questions for Chef. We've got Doris is the only question that was asked right now. Uh, Doris. Nobody, nobody wants to ask me any questions. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're going to work too much. Not as they're gonna, many they're gonna, cheaters. They're going to work too much. Can you believe this? We're going to get they're gonna work one beer. <laughs> All right. So now that the cheating has commenced, we're going to add our cream to like stabilize our yolks. 
It's going to drop the temperature a little bit. Okay. We're going to add our so fresh and preserved. So the room temperature. Room temperature. Room temperature. And then we're going to add our preserved and uh, fresh horseradish to That's this. That's combined. You, you put the I preserved and fresh horseradish together. Yep. So it's, it's uh, like grated that's like been sh like Gra minced. Yeah, grated. Grated. Grated, grated yeah. On a box grater, which? On a box grater or a microplane. Microplane. Works really well. I yep. plane each. I gotta um, be let's see. Salt was in there already. Water's already in. We're going to save our lemon juice. Our clarified butter is melted. We're going to incorporate this in, whip it up. I want to see if I can smell the horse at it. Oh, yeah. You really can. Yeah. Very aromatic. The horseradish is very aromatic. Very powerful. It's a strong yes. sauce. I do want to say that I'm also very disappointed in this audience and the at-home audience. Because no puns. Pun. No Where pun. are the puns? <laughs> it's not the audience for the puns. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we'll barely give you a question. <laughs> I haven't thought of it's any. It's Idea Fest. It's the curse it's of Idea, idea Fest. Fest. <laughs> if it was our typical at-home cooking audience, we would have puns and questions. <laughs> These idea fest slackers. Oh my goodness, look at that. Sure, we could give you the bottle. I don't even know how to make it. It's a, a low whisk situation. Oh. <laughs> oh. You won. Oh, I you won. Lindsay. You won. Okay. That's it. Lindsay gets the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm slowly streaming the warm clarified butter. I'm nervous about the butter going on your hand. Into into what? On your hand. I'm more nervous about it. Oh, uh, that's okay. Okay. So okay, the the you're slowly is just putting this clarified butter into Yep. And it's warm melted butter. Warm melted butter. And it's gonna keep Ooh. coming together. <laughs> it's yeah. fun. Uh oh. <laughs> It's perfect timing while you continue to whisk. Um, Tom said, bread puns happen when you yeast expect them. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Good job, Tom. Oh, wait a minute. Jenny had one. Jenny commented this at 6.30, like 12 minutes ago. Oh my gosh, Chelsea. She hates me. Um, uh, Jenny, I, oh, I can barely read this. Jenny said, I'm gonna butcher it. Ghee is a Spetzel kind of butter to clarify. Ah, oh, that's pretty good. At first, I thought that was like her just clarifying. <laughs> I'm like, I don't need to read that. Spetzel kind of butter. It's a pun. <laughs> so you have now whisked for like 12 minutes or something like that, right? Do I have any sweat? No. No. Oh, okay. Fair. No. You, you're just glowing. I'm glowing. See? Yeah. All right. All the butter's in. <laughs> so we take this at the restaurant and we strain it, and then we put it into an ISI container. Okay, which is tell people what that is, yes. An ISI container, yeah. Or I think it's it's European. It might be called something different, but we call it an ISI. And it comes with uh, nitrogen, nitrous chargers. And then we put it in, and we add two nitrous chargers to this, and we keep it warm, and then it creates an even fluffier type foam. So that's like the restaurant. Next restaurant move. You Bartenders know. love ISI charger things. They are constantly doing stuff with them, I think. So, we got a nice hot pan over here now. And we're going to start sauteing up some of our spetzel. All right, love it. So, you put oil in the pan with the canola. Yep, and that'll start frying up the, these dumplings. The sauce looks amazing. Um, I want people to kind of see the texture of it. It's Frothy. Frothy, buttery, horseradishy. Like, but look at that color. It's very light. light. It doesn't look like yeah. pure yolks anymore. Let's remind people real quick because Barb said, So I'm physically unable to whisk that hard for that long. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any way to do this Sebayan prep? Am I saying that right? Uh, Say no because we don't cheat, Barb. <laughs> <laughs> so the Harvey House is at 644 Go, yeah. West Washington. <laughs> <laughs> That was uh, perfect. In, in, in the Madison, the old Madison train depot, <laughs> historic building. Was that a yolk? <laughs> oh! <laughs> that was, was that a yolk? If you guys missed it at home, I don't want anyone to miss the amazing yolks that are happening here. <laughs> so many. This is funny. We just had to get them started. Okay. Right. I think this is. I think this is hot too. So we have this cooking. See how it's turning golden? Oh, yes. And it's puffing. That's what we're looking for. My childhood. Um, it's fine. It's Christmas. I'm going to put
put some oil in this pan. It's getting pretty hot. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. That's a good one. And then step one to cook the walleye is to put it on the actual bread on the bread toast side. side. Yeah. And it'll start crisping out the, the bread. And that's a little, yeah, that's good. I mean, it's maybe it'll touch, touch too much oil, but it'll be all right. So we're toasting that, and then we're gonna- And you're not moving I'm it. I'm not moving it. It'll naturally just fry. I've never cooked it on an induction before, but we'll see what happens. Something will happen. Something will happen. So yeah, this is nice and puffed, and it's got golden, crispy pieces on the spetzel. I'm gonna leave that over here. I'm gonna add a little bit this of our really already roasted cabbage to the mix. It smells like toasting pasta, basically. Yeah, add that to here. So this is just the cabbage that you just cooked in oil, yeah? Exactly, and then we'll finish all of this mixture right here with... Uh, <laughs> I am now... Some whole you, I don't know if these are puns or people just asking things. <laughs> <laughs> They're really but throwing you for a loop. I know, <laughs> Diane said unclear... It's got not got a... It can't be a pun. Unclear why immersion blender with wire attachment wouldn't work. Because I've, ne I've, nev okay. I've never done it before. <gasps> we haven't done nobody's, it. We don't nobody's, cheat, Barb. Nobody's... No, wait. Nobody's... Uh, I'm sure it could, right? Yeah. Right? Yep. I mean, I've made, ma I've, made, I've made mayonnaise before with uh, an immersion blender. I totally have too, yeah. Immersion blender. That works. And the only thing you can't do is you can't try to cut your mayonnaise recipe in the half or a quarter because you don't want that oh, much mayonnaise. You, and then it doesn't work. And then you like have this. You try to do that much with it the immersion work. blender and it doesn't work. Yeah. It gets mad at you and then you feel like a failure. It basically is what happens. Um. All right, now we're adding our whole butter to this. <laughs> it smells like popcorn now. It smells like? It smells like popcorn. <laughs> is that it? Is that the butter? Yeah. I'm ashamed. No, it's <laughs> That's what it smells really like. It good. smells like to me. It's like toasty. So this it's is starting to get yeah. toasty. Whoa, that's a little too dark. Oh. I got another one. Don't worry. This is for TV. It's still toasty. We'll put this one in here. Actually, volunteers tribute. Bake it. Bake it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, not six hours and 29 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> 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 uh, just a couple minutes. 350 probably for like uh, five minutes. Yeah. Um, until it flakes. 350. 350. And speaking of anybody who in, in the house here who didn't get the recipe, we can email it to you. Yes, we can. Because I don't think you guys would have gotten it. I will forget. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Chris was in charge of emailing recipes, and I have gotten better about emailing our beautiful in-person guests. But I didn't. He's been a little busy because of Idea Fest. Yeah. Yes. I usually just say, "We'll see you at six. I grab <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't send them anything, so it's probably my fault. Let's I, see I, I send all the things. But good puns, good puns. <laughs> This is, this is the most fun you can have on a Monday, everybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay, cool. So that's finished. Let's see, what do we got to put mm. that on? Let's put it in a smaller pan like this. So you would use the ISI for the sab Sabayon, the horseradish Sabayon. Yeah. Am I saying that right? Yep. Sabayon? Okay. Yep. And then you would also use it for the mousse that we did not have people make because it was very complicated. I wouldn't use that for the mousse. No, no. you would not. No, that's like more of a... Um, that's like more of for a ro that's like a food processor type thing because you would take right yes you okay. would take Robocoup. all that trimmed the roboku right Robocoup. you would take yeah. all that you take your cream you take everything and then you would blend it together okay so tell tell us just a little bit about the mousse if you if you can if you want to sure so we take all the trimmings from all the walleye okay because you uh, notice the walleye is a beautiful yeah shape. so you have it because we shape it to look like it's gonna go into um, the bread like that and um, not compatible cool uh, um, and then we put that into the food processor we call it the Roboku mm -hmm. and we blend it up with egg whites okay cream uh, creme fraiche salt a salt mix a little pink salt for preservation okay because it 
it's like a mousse and it helps like keep it like preserved. And um, what else is that? Cream, that, that, that. Potato starch. I didn't know what that was. Yeah, potato starch is a good one. What is it? Starch from potatoes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but know, it's like, a binder. It's, it's just a like yeah, thing, it'll yeah. help like keep get it like <laughs> it'll hydrate it. You know, it'll pull the pull the moisture out of. Got the it. Fish okay, okay. And keep it together too. So, so it we'll, helps but, it stay but, together. Yeah, it helps it stay together. And that like works as like our it. glue to Fine put the, mo the mousse and the thing. Feel it. I feel Got a little it. weird about that first fish, but we'll do this one right here. We have an in-house pun. I'm starching. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's a good one. Oh, we're going to add the lemon juice. Oh, gosh. It's a good one. Okay, that's the lemon juice yep. going into this. Sabe on the horse. That's okay. the lemon juice. <laughs> Finish that up. <laughs> Good one. She's fine. She's fine. <laughs> no, that was a good thought bubble. Thank you. That was a very good thought bubble. It's a thought bubble. It's a thought bubble. <laughs> a thought bubble. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank God somebody's recording. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Jenny said you could try the immersion blender, but it may not be worth the whisk. Oh. oh. <laughs> Good. That's very good. Nice job, Jenny. It's gonna be hard. She said to pick you one. could try the immersion blender, but it may not be worth the whisk. Yes, Lauren likes that one. Lauren likes that a lot. Yeah, it's, it's whiskey business. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I put in a new piece of fish. Is this one on the immersion on the induction burner? It's getting in, a little too dark, but well, you can show. see how. It's starting to turn bubbly. It's a little yeah. dark. It's golden. The fish is starting to cook. It's starting to turn into white. White. This one's gonna be mine. This is one. It, this one. Is it bread side down in the oven? It is. Yeah. It's bread side down in the oven. Good question, Rhonda. I like it. I just like anything involving like toasted bread. And like butter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, I don't even know. like. Right, all of these things are delicious, but you're pairing them with this like fish. So you can be like, yeah, I had fish. I was, I was being virtuous. <laughs> you know. No, we'll do. Yeah, yeah, and it helps dry out the Question fish about salting too. Fish ahead. It helps dry it out. It helps, uh, you know, pull out all that water, seasoning it always ahead of time, just like you would like a marinade. You know, you marinate your steaks before they get thrown on the grill, or you would do. You know, anything like that. Same thing with fish, even though it's a thin fillet. But wow. it just doesn't need to be for as, as long. Right. Yeah. Yes. All right. So we added, uh, I added the lemon juice, the lemon final juice. seasoning. I'm done whisking, so I don't have to intimidate no anybody. No more whisking. Um, the spatzel and cabbage is already combined. The sauce is done. The mm -hmm. fish is cooking still. Uh, it's toasting away. Let's see what this other one looks like. Yeah, let's get in there. So now I'm gonna add a couple. She's talkative, Evan. A couple um, <laughs> n pieces of butter. <laughs> and then I'm gonna yes. add. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, oh. thyme sprigs. <laughs> yes. You're not gonna eat all this butter. You're not gonna eat all this butter. You're not gonna eat all the butter. Smash <laughs> garlic <laughs> clove. Yeah, my, heart, my heart just made a happy sound. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want, you can always add like a little. A little lemon to it. Flip this over. Let it finish cooking. I think that's time. 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 Yeah. Are you listening to herb? Yeah. I was like, time for what? <laughs> that was one of my. Puns. It was one of your. Yeah, puns. I thought so. <laughs> you made you made it to the pun yeah. club. <laughs> All I could hear was Lizzo. Like it's about so just a little oh, tiny yeah. bit of very lemon. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. I and add that to the mix. Cheek. A little lemon, yeah, a little lemon cheek. Little lemon cheeks. It was it? Matt Sheebly was doing lemon cheeks. Oh, like, the lemon cheeks. The lemon cheeks. What was that for? Uh, he, uh, he was our chef in July, and he he was like cutting like these little corners. He's like, these are the cheeks of the lemon. We were obsessed with lemon. We were obsessed cheeks. with lemon cheeks. I love it. There we go. So then it just finished yeah. this last oh, bit this with is a little. This is a technique, basting yeah. the fish, basting mm -hmm. it all with the... Uh, Scooping the melted butter over. Melted butter with your little lemon cheek and your thyme and your garlic over the top. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's a little, yeah, it's good. I like, I like the dark, I do. 
And it's real pretty. All right, so that's gone a little bit. It's good. Turn this down just a touch. Let it finish on that side for a little bit. <laughs> and then take so a peek at us, other guy. Oven, you're yeah. not, you don't necessarily cook it all the way. Uh, not necessarily, because okay. you always want to do it that final, you know, that you final cooking this, yeah. with the butter and the lemon and the thyme and the garlic. And, um, so you're cooking it to a little under in the oven. Just a touch under, okay. yeah. Um, I'm going to grab one of these guys right here. Okay. Oh, this is what you were asking about before, the, the paper towels? Yeah. <laughs> Beca <laughs> we're trying to be like a little heart healthy, you know? So now you don't get all that butter. <laughs> You don't get all that butter onto it. At the restaurant, we have a bigger plate. Um, and then we just transfer the fish to the plate. And then the uh, spetzel and all the cabbage onto the side. This is a really nice adaptation, I think, from what you do. Like, you're, like it's, just, it's just this much simpler for home cooks mm -hmm. who aren't gonna like do all the spinach and the herbs and stuff in the spetzel, for example. Right, and make the spinach puree. I mean, if we're not doing all this whisking, we're not gonna make spinach puree. <laughs> yeah. And then you have the, you know, really fluffy, oh, beautiful. It's so fluffy. Wow. Savion that goes on there too. Work See the sauce. The <laughs> Secrets in the sauce, you guys. And then. <laughs> and then it's the last final, we add a little bit of, uh, cracked caraway to Ooh. the to the plate for garnish, just a little sprinkling. And Do you toast it first? Uh, we grind it in the in the Vita prep, so it gets pretty toasty and warm in there. Oh, got it, okay. So we don't have to do two steps. Um, and that's it. Ah, uh, looks great! <laughs> it's, a, it's a good, good yeah, sound. that's it, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to see? Beautiful. Yeah. Like, I'm can see it. There it is. <laughs> so you said people can order this, a different version of this at the Harvey House? Uh, it's the same, yeah, it's, it's a same? little, it's the same, but there's a couple of different, different things. Like the, sp the spetzel the is green with the spinach in it. And then um, the Savion, you know, is a little bit fluffier because we put it in the ISI. Um, and we whip it a lot longer too because mm -hmm. we didn't want to intimidate anybody. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's well, thank you. That's it. Amazing. Yeah. Yay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. I hope everybody at home has good yeah. food too. Appreciate it. Yeah. Harvey House, 444 West. 644 yes. West. 644 <laughs> West Washington. Get yeah, it. Madison Train Depot, right behind like Motorless Motion and in the baggage handlers building. Nice. Come, ch right. come, ch come and check us out. Well, thank you so much. No, oh, thank you. Appreciate right. it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll turn it over to Chelsea to take us out. Um, did I hear a question? Any last questions? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any last puns? Final puns. <laughs> One more pun. Can I have a piece of that fish? <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course you will. Our in-person guests get to taste the dish. You guys at home do not, but I hope you made it. I hope you made some. Jenny Hayes is our at-home winner of the wine. Um, with the pun, you could try the immersion blender, but it may not be worth the wait. <laughs> 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 very we nice, very them. nice. <laughs> um, we want to make sure you go to the Harvey House and try this dish. We want to thank Chef Joe and Lindsay, of course, and our sponsors who help make this event series possible. Again, our kitchen sponsor is Kessenix, where we are every month for these events. We also have our official wine pairing sponsor, Leopold's Books Bar Cafe on Regent Street. Our film partner, and thanks to the crew, our film crew. I often forget to say this, <laughs> um, but thanks to Hinkley Productions. Um, yeah, Cap Times Idea Fest. Make sure you go to captimesideafest.com. See the rest of the lineup for the rest of the week. We hope to see you at in person events. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. No, no we're good. good. Thank you guys. Best so idea much. Fest ever. <laughs> Yay. Cool.